Welcome back to part four of this mini-series, Let's Make and Solve a Rubik's Cube in Unity. In the last episode, we added a cube map and cast our first raycast at the cube to start reading the faces. In this episode, we'll graduate to reading the entire state of the cube with many raycasts. We're going to be picking up right where we left off, so if you missed the previous episodes, I do recommend checking them out first. Let's build the rays. List of type game object, build rays, transform, ray transform, vector three, direction. First, we'll start a count of the rays we create. The ray count is used to name the rays so we can be sure that they are in the right order. Int ray count equals zero. Then create a new list of the ray game objects. List of type game object rays equals a new list of type game object. And we'll explain what this does. This creates nine rays in the shape of the side of the cube with ray zero at the top left and ray eight at the bottom right. I'll put a helpful diagram here too. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So to make this, we can nest a couple of loops for the X and Y directions. We can imagine the center face at index four to be the axis origin at X equals zero, Y equals zero. Therefore, the zero index is negative one in the X direction and plus one in the Y. For int y equals 1, y is greater than negative 2, decrement y. For int x equals negative 1, x is less than 2, increment x. So, the first time through the loop, x equals negative 1 and y equals 1. That gives the position on the top left the 0 index. The next time, y is still 1, but x is 0. That gives the top middle position, which is index 1, and so on till the final time through the loop, x equals positive 1, and y equals negative 1 for the bottom right corner, or 8th index. We can use these coordinates to build the start position of the rays we create, relative to the ray transform that we pass to this method. Vector 3 start pos equals new vector 3 ray transform dot local position dot x plus x ray transform dot local position dot y plus y, ray transform dot local position dot z. We'll keep that the same. Next, we can instantiate an empty game object at the start position and child it to the new transform. We'll set the rotation as quaternion dot identity to start with and use the direction we pass the method to adjust the rotation of the ray transform that they are children of. Game object ray start equals instantiate empty go start pause quaternion dot identity ray transform. We can then set the name of the ray to the count so we know which ray is which and make sure that the rotation of the rays lines up with the face in the cube map it represents. Ray start dot name equals ray count dot to string. Then we add the rays to the list. Rays dot add ray start and increment the ray count. For the empty game object, we can reference a public game object, empty go. Now that the rays are built, we can fix the rotation and return the list of rays that we have created. Ray transform dot local rotation equals quaternion dot Euler direction return rays. Back in the editor, we can make a quick empty game object. I'm calling this ray start and make it a prefab. This prefab can be passed to the read cube scripts empty go slot. Next, we can create a private list of game objects to house the rays we create for each side of the cube. Each list will house nine rays, which are just empty game objects with their transforms arranged in a grid pattern, angled by the rotation of their parents. Private list of type game object front rays equals a new list of type game object. Private list of type game object back rays equals a new list of type game object. Private list of type game object up rays equals a new list of type game object. Private list game object down rays equals a new list of type game object. Private list game object left rays equals a new list of type game object. And private list game object right rays equals a new list of type game object. As a quick demonstration, to help visualize the new rays, it will be useful to see them in the inspector. So we can take a copy of this section from the start method and pop it back in the update method. We can comment out the calls to cube state and cube map for the time being. This process should work for each direction so we can create a new transform, ray transform, and set that equal to t front for the moment. Then we can replace t front with the ray transform variable when we build the ray. As we are setting the rotation of the t front variable in the build rays method so that it always faces the cube, we can instead set the raycast direction to ray transform dot forward and do the same for the debug rays. I'll create a couple more rays here so we can see what's going on when we adjust their transforms. This should create a row of rays firing out from T-front away from the cube. 
If we change the position of the z-axis to plus and minus one, it looks like we're firing a single ray, but it is actually three, just firing in the same direction. If we then rotate the t-front transform, the rays point at the cube just like we'll set them to using the build rays method. If we change the transform to t-right and move the x positions instead of the z, we can see that forward pointing rays emanating from t-right won't need their rotation changed as they are already pointing in the right direction. Okay, demonstration over, we can get rid of everything from the update method and uncomment this again. Back in the cube map script, we can now see what will happen if we set this index back to i. If we hit play in the editor, we can see that only one face shows up in the cube map and we get an index out of range exception. This is to be expected as the list only has one face in it and the i variable goes from zero to eight as it counts over the nine face panels in the cube map. We are hitting the middle of the cube with our ray, not the top right, but that's okay. The code is behaving exactly as expected and coloring the first index. In the read cube script, we need a method to populate cube state with lists of rays by calling the build rays method and passing it a ray transform for each of the sides and the direction they need to be rotated by for the rays to hit the cube, with ray zero at the top left and ray eight in the bottom right, just like in the cube map. Void set ray transforms, populate the ray lists with ray casts emanating from the transform angled towards the cube. Figuring out these angles was a bit of trial and error, but I've saved you the hassle. Up rays equals build rays, and that takes in t up and a new vector 3, 90, 90, 0. Down rays equals build rays, and that takes in t down and a new vector 3, 270, 90, 0. Left rays equals build rays, and that takes in t left and a new vector 3, 0, 180, 0. Right rays equals build rays, and that takes in t right and a new vector 3, 0, 0, 0, just like we saw in the demonstration. Front rays equals build rays, and that takes in t front and a new vector 3, 0, 90, 0. And finally, back rays equals build rays, and that takes in t back and a new vector 3, 0 to 70, 0. Now we have built six grids of nine ray start points, each pointing at the cube and save them into their respective lists of rays, we can call the set ray transforms method from the start method to generate them. However, we're still only sending a single ray. Let's create a new method to read an entire side of the cube. Public list of game objects read face that takes in a list of game objects, the ray starts, and the transform, ray transform. We can then take the raycast logic we created earlier to build this method. Instead of setting cube state dot front to faces hit, we will return the faces hit list. We also need to send out a ray for each of the ray starts that we pass into this method so we can create a loop. For each game object, ray start in ray starts, cast a ray and add the face we hit to the faces hit list. The ray's transform position becomes the transform position of the current ray start that we are accessing in the list and the direction becomes ray transform dot forward as we have angled the transforms to face the cube. We can add this direction to the debug rays too. As this method deals with a single side at a time, we won't set the cube map until all the sides have been analyzed. Finally, to read every side of the cube, we can create a new public void method, read state, make sure that we are dealing with the current instance of the cube state and cube map scripts, cube state equals find object of type cube state, cube map equals find object of type cube map, Set the state of each position in the list of sides so we know what color is in what position. Cube state dot up equals read face and that takes in the up rays and the transform t up. Cube state dot down equals read face and that takes in the down rays and the transform t down. Cube state dot left equals read face and that takes in the left rays and the transform t left. Cube state dot right equals read face and that takes in the right rays and the transform t right. Cube state dot front equals read face and that takes in the front rays and the transform t front. Cube state dot back equals read face and that takes in the back rays and the transform t back. Then we update the map with the found positions. Cube state dot set. To test this out, we can call it from the update method. This is extremely expensive as we are casting 54 rays a frame, but it should show us what is going on nicely. Read state. Over in Unity, we can see that the map is updated with nine front faces. We commented the other ones out in the cube map script, so this is working just fine. If we look at the scene view, we can see that each of the rays are pointing at the face of a piece, and that if they do not hit a face, they turn green. Back in the cube map script, we can uncomment the color logic in the update map method and update the map for each side in the set method. Now, if we hit play, every side becomes colorful and we have a bug. The white side is red. This is because I messed up naming the down face in the piece prefab and called it bottom, which starts with a B. 
Faces that start with a B get colored red. Oops. Luckily, this is an easy fix. Opening the piece prefab, we can rename the bottom face to down, and the change will be reflected in every instance of the piece. Hit play again, and that's more like it, but we do need to make sure that rotating the cube does not throw off the cube map. So, if we pop over to the rotate big cube script, and temporarily disable the movement by commenting out the swipe call and the drag call from the update method, we can play with the rotation manually in the editor. In the scene view, we can see that rotating the cube also rotates the raycasts. Perfect. It doesn't matter what direction the cube is rotated, the map will always be updated based on the initial position of the sides. As the middle pieces in a Rubik's Cube are fixed, this is the exact behavior we need. We also need to make sure that rotating the sides of the cube is reflected in the map, so I'm going to take the opportunity to quickly rename my pieces based on the first characters of the active sides. This central front piece only has the front active, so I set it to F. This piece's active sides are front and left, FL, and so on for each piece. This isn't necessary for the code to work, but it is useful for knowing which piece is which. Now that we have identified the pieces, we can select the outer pieces in the upside and child them to the central up piece, U, to test the rotation. If we rotate the U piece, we can see that the cube map is updated to reflect the new state of the cube. Perfect. That's it for part four. In the next episode, we'll add player interactivity with the ability to rotate any side of the cube. If you're enjoying this series, then please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.